Say goodbye to SC Groningen. The Dutch club will not be in EAFC 24 following their relegation from the top flight of Dutch football. And you know what? I haven't used these guys, I think, ever in my life. So why not give them a rebuild of their very own as a way to say goodbye for now? So this is the roster they come into the game with. It is kind of all over the place, but there is a bit to work with. I see Ricardo Pepe, and I know he's only on loan, but I love this guy. He's an American superstar up coming superstar. Let's see if we can make him live up to his potential. Our first signing is one of the coolest signings I have ever made in my life. This dude's name is Million Manhoff. You cannot be named Million and not be uh, like somebody of note. He's a Dutch right midfielder who we are going to bring across here for three million pounds. If I ever have a son though, Million has officially entered the shortlist. Speaking of cool names, we have Ant-Man on loan at the club. What is going on? I should probably look at signing this guy next. If you don't know, his name is Daddy's Boy. No, I'm not making that up. His name is literally Franklin Daddy's Boy Niententu. We do have our first player departure here as Dankalui is out of the club. Iran Dust is off to Aberdeen for just over a million pounds. And the young 57 rated goalkeeper is out on loan. I am talking about Meister. Let's see if we can make him somewhat decent. Bro's probably not getting higher than a 64 rated though, let's be honest. And another two year loan move here, this time for the young center half, Norden Musampa. I wanted to make a marquee signing though for this squad. And we're gonna do that at the center midfield position as we sign the Austrian center midfielder, Alexander Prass here for 4.6 million pounds. That is the opening transfer window done and dusted here at Groningen. I'm really curious to see how we're sitting in the Eredivisie table halfway through the season. I'm not expecting us to be in European spots, but I don't want to find ourselves down near the bottom of the table. You beauty. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, but that is def- I'm not, I'm not a genius, but even I can tell that is not the bottom of the table. We currently sit eighth in Eredivisie right now, although we are eight points away from Herenveen going up to seven, and we could easily drop down towards the bottom of the table. We might be bad, but at least we're not go-ahead eagles. <laughs> They're trying to be reverse invincibles, and I'm all here for it. Oh, final final could actually be the invincibles. This is a weird series. I've got some sad news, ladies and gentlemen. We've lost him. We've lost the Ant-Man. Paul Rudd, it's been an honor. For a first season, this exceeded all of my expectations. In real life, Groningen got relegated. We finished 10. 44 points. We were nowhere near Heronveen and getting close to those European spots, but I'm very pleased. The big question though, did we have an invincible or did we have a reverse invincible? Reverse invincible. No. Go ahead, Eagles got four wins. All right, did Feyenoord hold on and no, Feyenoord didn't even win the league. Feyenoord bottled it heavy and Ajax end up winning Eredivisie. Feyenoord did win the cup though. Liverpool win the Champions League. Arsenal win the Europa. League, and it is Slavia Praha stopping it from being all three English teams winning as they win the Conference League. Ricardo Pepe has had an unbelievable season. Man, he might have gone too well this year. I don't know if we're going to be able to re-sign him next season. He is among three players that are going back to their parent clubs, all who had great years, but to be honest, Pepe's the only one I'm going to try signing next year. With a 10.5 million pound market value, that might be too much. And I'm going to let this goalkeeper develop just leave on a free. A great first season here though in Dutch football. Let's see if we can kick on with it in season number two. But lads, I want to announce an exciting new partnership with Sangalo who are sponsoring today's video. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you would know I have quite the extensive kit collection. And when Sangalo approached me to work with me, this was the perfect fit. Sangalo offer kits from some of the more unique leagues and teams from around the world. For example, right now I'm wearing a Paro FC shirt that I got from Sangalo. Paro FC are from the Bhutan League. And on their website, they are selling kits from all around the world. You've got teams from Uganda, India, you got Hanoi FC, the Zimbabwean League. Like there are some awesome kits for sale. They have a really cool mission in trying to promote some of the lesser known teams and the sleeping giants in world football. So I'm really excited to be working with them over the next few months. We're gonna be using some of the teams they have available on their website. But if you're interested in copying a kit from Sangalo, make sure you click the link in the description. Super awesome brand with a super awesome initiative. Really excited to work with them. Go 
go click the link in the description and let's get back into the video. Yeah, lads, Operation Peppy might have to be put on hold for this season. We've only got 7 million pounds. We've got Kruger who can play striker for the short term. And honestly, I think we need a center back, a goalkeeper, maybe even a left back as the priorities this year. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to prioritize those. But Peppy, I won't forget about you. We're gonna come back for you one day. Mark my words. A big signing to kick off season two here. Seb Vandenberg, the Dutch former wonder kid. I guess he's still a wonder kid, but he's at a critical crossroads in his career. He needs more game time. He's not getting it at Liverpool. So he's come back to the Netherlands to resurrect his career and get it back on track. Joining us here on a cut price deal of 4.6 million pounds. Again, continuing the trend of loans. The first man out this season is the center half, Block Zeal. And we're also sending a kid that I have pretty high hopes for, to be honest. It is the Italian midfielder, Luciano Valente, off for two years to Sheffield United. It is time for a new goalkeeper though, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Lewenberg is headed to West Bromwich Albion. And we're also gonna sell Ragnar Orat Mangoen. Yeah, that's the best I'm gonna do for 1.6 million pounds. And here it is, fellas. We've got ourselves our new starting goalkeeper. It's not the type of transfer that's going to make headlines around the world, but I'm hoping this man can be quality for us in the long term. It is going to be Carlo Sentic, the Croatian keeper, joining us from Hayek Split. So that is another transfer window in the books. Big questions around the squad this year. The, like, we've got some really quality players in this team, but like, do we have enough to get up there and compete with the bigger teams? I think the hardest part about this rebuild initially is going to be making the jump from a mid-table team to getting up and competing with the likes of Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, all those types of guys. Big opportunity here for Kruger, though, to see if he can make the starting striker spot his own. Well, we might actually be slowly cutting through here, lads. We just continue to exceed my personal expectations. Currently fifth in the Dutch League. I would love if we could scrape in and get ourselves a conference league spot. I'm not hopeful, but that would be really nice. Um, are we going to have a reverse season as well? No, Cam Burr have had one win. God damn it. I want a reverse invincible season in this rebuild. I'm of the opinion that if you're making big transfers in January, it's because things are going wrong. Also, the fact that we have no money in the club means I'm going to make this signing here for a young 16-year-old Jamaican striker by the name of Jacob King. We are really struggling in terms of depth at the striker role, so why not get this kid in as a good backup player? And he could really become any Anything. So welcome to the club, King. One point away from being on points with Ajax. I don't think fifth place gets us conference league in the Dutch league, but I hope to be proven wrong. PSV edging out final on goal difference to win the league and then down the bottom of the table. It doesn't really matter, but Cam Burr only had two losses all year. Ajax have won Orange Becker. How far did we lost in the semis? No. Real Madrid win a belter of a Champions League final against Dortmund. Benfica break their European curse and win the, the Europa League. Conference League is just on my mind, but this year it goes to Freiburg. Okay, Kruger. Okay, Flo. Florian, I see you, bro. I see you. 20 goals for the man. That is exactly what we wanted. I was worried about how we'd go without Ricardo Pepe up top, but Kruger, great season. Plus five and 18 goal contributions here for Johan Ho. Dude's turning into a beast. Same thing can be said about Million. Before we know it, he'll be getting a million goals. I'm really disappointed in myself for that joke because the opportunities are endless and to use the name Million in such a shit joke, it's just, it's just not on lads. I would like to take this time to formally apologize to everybody listening. I feel like every year we're letting a young player that's not really doing anything go. This year, it's your turn. Jorg Schruders, welcome to the free agents list. Gotta show some love to Jetro Willems who has been holding down the fort at the left back role so far. But it is time for us to get some fresh blood and up great as well as we sign Valentin Barco here from Boca Juniors. Ladies and gentlemen, Elvis has left the building. And by Elvis, I mean Elvis Manu, who's off to Vitesse for £810,000. Lads, I'm only signing players with dope names, which is why we are signing Ryan Flamingo. You can't make it up. You can't. You just can't. We're signing him for £3.2 million from Sassuolo. Jetro Villains, you've been an absolute stalwart for us, but it is time to officially say goodbye 
goodbye as we get 1.9 million pounds to send you to the French League. And we are saying goodbye to someone that has wanted to leave since almost day one. Duarte off to Ruka. I want this to be the year where we break through the noise, lads. Our team is starting to get really good. I want to get ourselves into the Champions League or the Europa League, though, and start to get that European money so that we can make some massive upgrades to this squad and become the best team in the Netherlands. I am very happy to report, though, that we are in the Conference League. We've got a very balanced group with Milan being the standout side, but I would love for us to go on a run. This is really a great barometer to see what sort of level we're sitting at. Oh, we're sitting eighth in the Dutch League right now in the Eredivisie on the 1st of January. I think we need to make some moves here if we want to get ourselves into the top four. We're only five points away, so we're within striking distance, but we need to do everything in our power to get up there. To be fair, the Conference League has gone exactly how I expected. We come second in the group with just one loss, but we are into the preliminary rounds now where we're versing HJK Helsinki. Hopefully, we can go and get ourselves deep into the knockout rounds. We're also in the quarters of the cup, so I, I want some silverware, or at least get close to some silverware this year. Despite him having a pretty solid start to the season, I am going to throw Liam Van Gelderen on the transfer list. I think we need a solid upgrade here at the right back spot. Trying to raise as much money as possible, which is why Bolka is leaving the club. It is official. A new era is upon us at the right back role. Liam Van Gelderen is heading to Feyenoord. Hopefully, this doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. And we're going to pick up a young fella that I've been wanting to sign for a hot minute now. It is the young Frenchman, Sal Kumbetti, joining us here from Leon. What happened to his value? His value was literally 10 million pounds when I approached Leon to sign him. And now EA have just absolutely nuked it. Come on, man. The disrespect, man. Do you not know what Mr. Rebuild can do? I now want to make this dude the best right back in the world just to prove a point. That is extremely frustrating. We weren't even close, fellas. We were not even close. We finished seventh here in the league. We need a circuit breaker moving forward. Otherwise, we're just going to be stuck here forever. Top of the table is going to be fine. Or yeah, of course, we go and sell our right back and he goes and wins the bloody league. And then at the bottom of the table, it is going to be Volendam. I'm telling you, one of these days, someone's not going to get a win. PSV did win the cup. We lost in the semi-finals for the second straight year. Man City win the Champions League. Tottenham win the Europa. And it is Barcelona beating Liverpool in a star star conference league final we made it to the round of 16 and in the round of 16 we lost on penalties to the hungarian side a real up and down season but one thing is for certain million manhoff and Florian Kruger have had phenomenal seasons. We are going to be letting a few more players leave on freeze. I might have to do a little bit of work behind the scenes next year in getting our squad depth up to scratch. Season four, around the corner. Only domestic football to focus on. This needs to be our best season yet. I was really hoping this was going to be the year that we could go in and get Pepe back to the club. But I think that first season might have created a monster. His potential on FIFA is 83. He's already hit it at age 22. He's at Aston Villa and his value is just way too expensive for us. We cannot afford that. So the wait will continue, but I still want, I still want Pepe. I still want him. I've rejected this offer, but our captain, Alexander Prass is starting to get attention from the big boys. It is time, however, for us to part ways with Florian Kruger. He's done a solid job for us so far, but we need the money and we need to get ourselves a superstar striker to move forward. So we're sending him to Porto Menze. And instead of signing Signing Ricardo Pepe. We're going to sign his Aston Villa teammate in John Duran. A lot of pressure on the Colombians' shoulders, but I'm hopeful this man can be the guy to guide us to the next level here at Groningen. Got a pretty reasonable price for him as well, 13 million pounds. It's no secret, I love the free agents list. I love regens, I love free agents. It is my favorite part about career mode. Well, at least one of them, but we're going to sign three free agents here. Anwar Ali, who can be a very versatile backup 
for us at the right mid roll, the attacking mid roll, the center forward roll, Victor Baran, who is a right back from Poland, and then someone that I'm very excited about, a Dutch midfielder here, Roll De Vries, 71 rated. Dude looks like a little bit of a stud, but I'm very excited to have them all on the Groningen squad. This team is going to be good enough to get some sort of European football here in the Dutch league. Surely we're better than a bunch of these teams. We, we need to, man. A lot hinges on this season. Otherwise, I might start gutting this team. We don't have any conference league to distract us this year. Our sole focus is purely on the Eredivisie. This is what we needed. Maybe we don't need to blow up and hit the self-destruct button. We currently sit third in Eredivisie. I want to make that push though. I want to get in the title hunt. Well, that being said, we could easily fall out of the top four. So I just want, let's just keep it going, lads. Keep it going. There's not much we can do. We don't have much much money. Let's just keep it rolling. We're gonna spend the last little bit of our transfer budget though on a backup center half here. Ramon Hendricks is gonna join us from Feyenoord. I don't expect this dude to be a starter, but I just want to have him in case somebody goes down in our back line. Fourth in the league. We're gonna be playing, I believe, Europa League next year. This rebuild truly has felt like the biggest grind. Like we are slow getting up there. Ajax do win the league. Come on, I want to see a zero. I want to see a zero. It's a three for FC Emin. But we have won our first trophy as Groningen manager. We have won Orange Becker after two years in a row of reaching the semis. We take down Feyenoord in the final. Took down Heronveen in the semis. PSV in the quarters. We had some big results there. But add it to the trophy cabinet. You love to see it. PSG, they win the Champions League. Meanwhile, it is going to be the Europa League goes to Leverkusen. And chill. I feel like every year there has been basically big ass teams winning the Conference League. John Duran, way to announce yourself to the club, my guy. 24 goals plus for growth. That is awesome. And again, like we, we've come to expect it at this point. Million Manhoff, he's got himself, what's that? 31 goal contributions this year. That is that is brilliant. I, I take my hat off to you, sir. And for the first time in this rebuild, I'm not letting anybody walk at the end of the season. This season needs to be different. This season needs to be the best one yet. We're coming out here and signing a very exciting prospect. It is Desiree Dewey, the Frenchman, joining us here from Stade Rene. And in response, we are going to say thank you, but goodbye to Thomas Suslov. He's decent, but we just need that upgrade. We need also more money in the bank to make some massive marquee signings. A little bit of money in, but it's a Deadwood player in a position we don't need out in the two Who's are the defensive midfielder leaving? The big departure though, lads, is this one here. It is Paulos Abraham, the Swedish left midfielder heading to Real Betis. We get 50 million pounds. 50 million pounds for this dude. We are going to have to put that to good use and get ourselves a superstar player that is hopefully going to get us into the Champions League. And this is the man I want. We're going to go in and see if we can sign Wilfred Noto here from Newcastle United. He's an absolute wonder kid. I don't know if I've ever used him in career mode this year, to be honest. I don't know if I've signed him in a rebuild. It would be great if we could get him into the club. Eddie Howe wants 58-7. I would accept that, but I want to save as much money as possible and potentially getting another player into the squad. 54-7 is accepted from Eddie Howe. You love to see it. And there it is, lads. We get it over the line. We break our club record transfer and sign the Italian left midfielder Wilfred Noto here. You love to see that. That's beautiful. That is a great pickup. 54.7 million pounds. And he is a superstar. With a squad this good, we have to be pushing for an Eredivisie title. You can't tell me that we aren't nearly as good, if not better, than Ajax of this, at this point of the career mode. We've got Million Manhoff. We've just signed Wilfred Noto. We've got the Captain Prask. Vandenberg's turning into a beast. This team is so balanced and ready to win. At least that's what I'm trying to manifest. Our Europa League group is manageable. I genuinely think this group is easier than our Conference League group. I want us to get onto the international stage, onto the European stage, and show the world that we actually exist. Third in the league. We're six points away from PSV at the top of the table. But there again, there is just so many teams breathing down our neck. I feel like every year, the eight to three 
is just a log jam. Please tell me we got out of our group in the Europa League. Okay, we barely, bro, we barely got out of that group. That is, that is concerning, but at least we topped it and at least we're still alive in the Europa League. Gonna add another piece to our bench though. It is Cassius Malila. He's a South African attacking midfielder joining us here from Nottingham Forest. 78 overall, 25 years of age. This is definitely a great pickup and hopefully we don't need him, but if we do, I'm sure he'll do a job. Second in the league. One point, one point, one point behind AZ Alkmaar. Does that mean we're in the Champions League though? I'm not fully, I'm not fully around how the Dutch league works. I'm hoping that means Champions League. We had the least amount of losses in the entire league though. Anybody get zero? Volen down with two. We do not go back to back in Orange Becker, however. AC Milan win the Champions League on penalties. Wolverhampton have won the Europa League. How did we go? So, oh, we got eliminated in the round of 16 that is that's not too good and by again what is with the conference league in this rebuild and just having elite teams that is why we paid the big bucks for wilfred noto 23 goals duran with 20 goals and again the main man million manhoff with 25 goal contributions bro just does he just doesn't miss we're back to releasing players or letting players go on freeze but i actually wanted to sign this guy he just doesn't want to re-sign a contract cracking all notice season number six, hopefully with Champions League footy on our horizon. Right now, there is just one position I am hell-bent on improving, and that is the goalkeeper position. Hence the reason we have brought the Italian keeper, Marco Carneschi, across here from Wolverhampton. Wolves are having a very good video. They've won a conference league, and we're going to bring their shot stopper to the club and hopefully get ourselves some European silverware. For the first time in this episode, though, we have got Champions League qualifiers. We're taking on Sturm here from the Austrian League. Can we get ourselves a strong first? First leg result at home. No, we do not. We dominate statistically, but it is all tied up heading into the second leg. If we get eliminated here, that'll be a monumental failure. This is a big game for us. And in the second leg, we leave it late, but we scrape through against Graz. My God, that is that has not filled me with confidence. Second round of qualifying is against Rangers here. One of the most famous sides in Scotland. We're traveling away to Glasgow here to the Ibrox for the first leg, which is another draw. That is a chaotic draw to say the least. Come on, lads. Get us through to the group stages. I haven't managed our stamina too well, but hopefully it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're going to be without Manhoff for our first group stage game, but we go through against Rangers. A lot of players have a lot to prove this season. This is a make or break for certain players moving forward. Flamingo, even D Desiree Dewey. I know we just brought him in. He needs to do some big work. Hove needs to do some big work. There is a lot that could change this season. We've got a really tough Champions League group though. Real Madrid, Atalanta, and the other side of Glasgow, Celtic. We're going to have to be locked in if we want to get ourselves out of this group. Oh God, that is incredibly humbling. That is... That is really bad. Zero losses, three draws, three losses. Oh, zero wins, I should say. I am, I am surprised. I thought we could have had a red hot crack at it this year. We have come last in our Champions League group stage. We're going to go back to the drawing board. On the flip side, our top of the league, but we... Oh, I'm, I'm blown away. We need to win the league this year, lads. We need to. It's about time. Come on. And yeah, I said it was a big season for a few players. Flamingo hasn't grown. He's 25 years of age. I need to add bro to the transfer list and we need an upgrade here at the center back role for the future. And there it is, lads. It has happened a lot faster than I initially expected it to, but Ryan Flamingo, no longer a Groningen player. He is off to Lazio for 38.3 mil. And we've got our center back for the future. Jorge Suarez is going to join us here from Manchester United. Bro, was a, he's gone up. Yes, he was 84 rated when I was negotiating for him. And now that we've signed him, he's gone up to an 85, which I will, I'll never complain about that. We signed him from the Red Devils for 46 million pounds. Come on. We have won the Eredivisie title and it's come down to the final day. We finished one point ahead of PSV Eindhoven and two points ahead of Ajax Amsterdam. And besides that, 
everybody else was pretty dog shit, to be totally honest. There is 21 points between us and fourth place AZ Alkmaar, which is wild to see. But we've won the league, added to the trophy cabinet, and most importantly, we don't have to worry about the qualifiers next year. We're straight into the Champions League. Come on. Reverse Invincibles. God damn it, only three for Emin. Go ahead, Eagles of one Orange Becker. Man City win the Champions League. I still can't believe we got zero wins. RB Leipzig beat Ajax in the Europa League final. That might have been to benefit to us. Although they came third, didn't they? They came third. And Sevilla win the Conference League. John Duran and Noto absolutely crushing it. We have found some very consistent players in this video. 32 goal contributions is wild. Big question mark whether we even need Pepe next season. Duran might be the man. Next year, my goal isn't even to win the Champions League. It's just to get one win. All right, fellas. I want to make it happen. I want to make some big moves this season. We need some money. We're going to sell Johan Hov here. He's been a loyal servant to us since season number one, but it is time to part company with the Norwegian attacking midfielder heading to Inter Milan and we get an extra 44 and a half million pounds into our transfer budget. We're going for him, lads. Ricardo Pepe currently playing at AC Milan. Market value is 66 million pounds, 86 overall. I've been told that I have to pay about 75 million pounds to get this to happen. So we're going to put that in straight away. Not going to mess about. And AC Milan are going to accept that offer. We're one step closer to getting Ricardo Pepe back to Groningen. Now we just need to hope that he accepts our contract offer. Ladies and gentlemen, he is back. Back in green and white. I told you guys one day he would be back at the club and we've made it happen. Ricardo Pepe at the age of 25. Welcome back to FC Groningen, my man. Gonna bolster our reserve prospects and get a little bit of experience here in our back line. The dreads might have been a bit of a giveaway, but we are gonna add Nathan Ake to the side here as a veteran experienced player that has been there, done that, and won Champions League title. We signed him from Inter Milan for 8.4 million pounds. You know, I'm kind of hopeful that this team has what it takes to get at least one win in the Champions League group stages this year. I don't know if that's a fair benchmark, but we've built ourselves something pretty special here so far at Groningen. Our group this year, 10 times more manageable than it was last year. There's no Real Madrid's out there, so that's already a bonus, but we've got Villarreal, RB Salzburg, and RB RSC Serang, a group that I fully think and fully intend to top. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. That is what we were chasing. That is what we were after. Top of the lot, top of the group. Group H belongs to us and we are into the Champions League last 16 for the first time in club history. Around a 16, we've got Benfica. This is an interesting final 16. You've got teams like Southampton, Dinamo Kiev, Benfica. Uh, I guess Munch and Gladbach have been there and done that, but we're taking on Benfica. Seven points clear here, pushing for back-to-back -back Eredivisie titles and we are in a great position to do so. Time to see what we're made of, lads. Our first knockout round action in the Champions League and we're traveling to Benfica, off to Portugal. They've got a team of wonder kids here. Musa, Sheldrick, Marquinhos. All right, here goes nothing. Benfica got a six side, and it's proven as it's a three-all draw. My God. Here goes nothing, lads. Everything hangs in the balance here. Our Champions League run could be over before it even really began. It's three-all. We're back in the Netherlands, taking on a very impressive Benfica side, which we dominate. Where was that in the first leg? Where was that defense? We win 3-0. Pepe with a brace. All right, that's a, that's a lot better. That's cool. We're into the quarters. No walks in the park in the quarterfinals. It's straight into the thick of it, straight into the weeds. We've got Liverpool. First leg is on the road in Anfield, at Anfield in Liverpool, hoping to come away with a solid result here. We've got a good side, but honestly, I would argue ours is potentially better, but it's a nil. How do we go from scoring back-to-back -back games with three goals and then we get none in this game against Liverpool. At least we're still alive in it. Here goes nothing, fellas. 3-0 in the last game that we were at home for. We need another result like that. We need to take down Liverpool. Everything hangs in the balance. Anybody's game, and we come away with it. For the first time, from at least what I've seen, we've been dominated on the statistics. Only one more shot, but we have come away by an early goal to Duran, and we are into the final four. Beautiful. Beautiful. 
huge. Okay, we're taking on our group mates, Villarreal. We took down the yellow submarine in the group stages, and now we face them in the Champions League semifinals. A star-studded other leg between PSG and Barca, but we take on Villarreal. This is going to be interesting. Full strength side on the park, and once again, we start on the road. We're getting into a nice rhythm, nice rhythm of that. I would love to actually get a win in the first leg, though. St. Maximin, Nusa, Thuram, Balogun up top, Rudiger. First leg here in Spain is going to be a 2-0 win. That is exactly what we were after. One foot. I don't even want to say one foot. That's too cocky. Like three toes in a Champions League final. Many teams have blown a 2-0 lead in the Champions League before. This wouldn't be uncharted territory. We don't want to become the latest to join that list. We want to take care of business. No injuries, no suspensions, and get Groningen through to a Champions League final. Beautiful. No suspensions. Beautiful. We're headed to a Champions League final and we are doing it unscathed. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the 2029 Champions League final will be contested between PSG and FC Groningen. Come on, lads. Taking a look around the grounds, Tottenham win the Europa League. Celta Vigo win the Conference League. We go back to back and have won the Dutch League. Only two losses all year. Nine points clear. We are well and truly the top dogs in the Netherlands. Come on, zero, 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 zero. Damn, they're getting good. The bad teams are getting a little bit better. Oh, we could have had our second trophy, but we lost the Orange Becker final here to AZ Alkmaar. <laughs> this striker partnership of John Duran and Ricardo Pepe is unbelievable. 49 goals between the two of them. Noto with 20. I, I can't wait. I cannot wait to use this team. Look at the million man. The million dollar man, Manouf. 93 rated. 25 goal contributions. Are you taking the piss? This team is sick, bro. This team is sick. I can't wait to use it. Let's get into it. Champions League final time. A star-studded PSG outfit versus a star-studded Groningen side. Who's going to leave North London, though, as European champs? Come on. Feed it. Oh, that's a great ball. That's a great ball. We caught them flat-footed. Why did I pass that? I should have just been selfish. Got to defend. Jimenez going there to Mbappe. I'm bringing the keeper out. And I'm glad we did because he got a fingertip to it. Oh, I wanted Noda to keep making it. Even I pressed L1. But we're still on here. Suck him in. Good stuff. Come on. We've got the overlap. Back post. Back post. Oh. PSG playing the press here. We need to use this to our advantage. Flick it over. That's a great ball. It's Kumbetti the right back. I don't want him there. Go back. Shoot. Come on, Ricardo Pepe. In the right place at the right time. You guys need to learn by now. Never play a press against us. We will always exploit it. What a run. What a ball. What a finish. And we take the lead here in the Champions League final through the main man, Ricardo Pepe. Everybody needs to be back here. What are we doing, man? What are we doing, man? How have we conceded that? Oh, we switch off and Kylian Mbappe in the 89th minute. Feed it. Please be on side. Tamori's knackered. Pepe. No! Ricardo! We're going to a penalty shootout. Jesus Christ. I can't lie, lads. I'm nervous. I haven't had a penalty shootout in a hot minute. It's no two up against Donnarumma and Donnarumma. This saves it. And Bape puts it. Are you kidding me, man? Pepe going right here. Pepe. Top corner. Beautiful stuff. We need a save, though. Jimenez is going to go to the right, isn't he? Jimenez. It goes to the right. And it's fucking saved. Come on, Prass. Come on, Prass. Prass sends Donnarumma the wrong way. Hakan. He's going to stay down the middle, I reckon. Ah, oh, it's a good penalty. Come on, Dewey. No. No. I red timed it. Please, no. Sanchez. Fuck me, man. If we miss this, we lose. It's millionaire Manhoff. Manhoff, please. Manhoff, please. Okay, we need to save this. We need to save this. Which way are you going to go? It's going to go to the right. Fuck me, man. We've lost it on penalties, lads. 
I cannot believe what I'm witnessing, lads. I cannot believe it. We have lost the Champions League final on a penalty shootout. That actually has broken my soul. On to another season we go. Desiree Dewey was low-key ass in that Champions League final. So we're going to spend the big cash here to get our center attacking midfield role upgraded. It is the Dutch attacking midfield superstar, Avi Simmons, joining us here from Bayern Munich. Our team is incredible. We know this. We just need to make sure we get ourselves back to the Champions League and don't get complacent. Get ourselves back to a final. We're still a young team. Team. There's still growth to be had. It sucks that we lost the final last year. It hurts so much, but we're going to come back stronger. Borussia Dortmund being in our group is definitely a tough challenge, no doubting that, but I do think we still should be getting out of this group. Torino and Malmo hopefully won't challenge us too much, but we were literally a minute away from a Champions League title last year. Let's just get back to what we know and get that title. So Borussia Dortmund were the team we were worried about. We should have been worried about Torino. I mean, they come second in the group we still top the group but that is that's wild to see fair enough we're into the last 16 of the champions league who do we have this year we've got sporting so we've gone from one portuguese side in benfica in last year's round of 16 to sporting this year currently undefeated in the league though can we get ourselves an invincible season with Groningen? all right here we go lads back at it taking on sporting this is big lads i don't we, we were the runners up last year we do not want to get eliminated in the round of 16 straight into it, hoping for the best and getting the best. Pepe misses a penalty, but we take a narrow lead back to the Netherlands with us. We've got the lead. It's only a 2-1 lead, so we cannot afford to be complacent at all. Of course, we have confidence after what we've done in the past, but you're only as good as your next game. Let's show that we are still great. The second leg is another 2-1 win. No injuries, no suspension, and we're back at the final eight. A new opponent that we're yet to face, it is Napoli. Salzburg and Rangers still hanging around. We're not facing them, though. We're heading to Naples. Curious as to whether Napoli still have players like Oshiman. They don't from what I can see, but they have Vardashelia still. Jota up top there, and, Bem and Bemba's in there. Wilmot, interesting side here. And the score is a 3-1 win. John Duran, Ricardo Pepe, and Xavi Simmons all getting on the score sheet. Come on, lads. Please, let's not bottle it. Let's not bottle it. We're into the quarterfinals, trying to get to the final four for the second straight season. 3-1 up, and we hang on. Ricardo Pepe adds another, and we're back to the semis. This is going splendidly. Oh, hello there. It's a chance for revenge. P.S. G. In the Champions League semi-final, the team that eliminated us in heartbreaking fashion on penalties last year is our opponent here in the final four. The first leg on the road in Paris. Nothing would make me happier than eliminating PSG, but we're going to take it one game at a time and it is a one all draw just like it was in the Champions League final here in the first leg. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Strap in and prepare yourselves. We have an opportunity for revenge and to get ourselves back in the Champions League final, which we do! Come on, lads! Barco gives us the, our left back. Barco scored a brace to get us into the Champions League final. That is unbelievable. Yes, lads. We are headed to a Champions League final and we've taken out PSG, our arch nemesis along the way. Oh, yes. But we are going to be facing another juggernaut of world football here in the Champions League final. It is Manchester City. Taking a look around the grounds, Newcastle United win the Europa. And the Conference League goes to Leon, who take down Southampton on penalties. Lads, we have done it. We have gone invincible with Groningen here in season number eight. We have not lost a single game in the league. That is brilliant. Only 36 goals conceded, 90 scored, 88 points. We were 21 points clear of PSV. That is domination. Can we get a reverse Invincibles to top off the season? No, we can't. Five losses. But it is going to be FC Twente winning Orange Becker. It's time for our second bite at the cherry. Our team is even stronger. Look at some of those stats. God damn, I'm excited. Let's get into it and rewrite the wrongs of last year. We've gone from having to face Mbappe last year to Haaland this year. 
It's just not fair. Good first touch from Kumbedi. He was very good with the overlaps last Champions League final. Get that one back. Get that one back. Oh, save from Edison. Nah, what is that defense? Great save though from Carnesi. Beautiful switching there. Beautiful overlap. It's the same again. Get it in early this time though. Get it in early. What? Oh. Chavi Simmons. It's a good first touch. He's in behind. Chavi. Chavi makes it 1-0 on the counter attack. You bloody beauty. Look at that. We've got the lead here against City. Chavi. Oh. Bucko! Nope. Oh, what a save! Switch it again. Beautifully switch. No, don't flick it on. Good stuff there to Barco. Go early. Go early. Duran, we should be 3 0 up by now. Nah. Please no. Please no. Yes. Carnesi off his line that saves our ass. Blow the whistle, referee. Belt it. There it is. Oh, this was so stressful, but we have done it. Heart in the mouth type of stuff. But we have completed the FC Groningen rebuild after two attempts. This has well and truly been one of my favorite rebuilds of the year. A roller coaster of emotions, but our captain, the Austrian, Prass, is going to lift the Champions League title to crown the Dutch side Groningen, champions of Europe. Lads, if you enjoyed today's rebuild, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.